How do you set up the WT32 ETH01 board with WLED software so that it can be part of your home light show? We're going to cover this in today's video, so come join me. I have to begin with a story about these boards while I solder these pins. A lot of the Ethernet boards that are available are power over the Ethernet, or PoE. This means that they don't need an external power supply hooked in through their pins, but they can power on through their ethernet connection if your network supports PoE. Since my controllers would be encased with the same power supply that powered the lights, I could go with a cheaper option that didn't have PoE support. When I first purchased these boards on Amazon, they were advertised like this, with no pins. However, to my surprise, they came like this. If you notice, the mail pins were soldered so that the components on the board and the ethernet jack got in the way. It couldn't be mounted on a perf board or a solderless breadboard. Rather than trying to desolder them or just let them stand free, I made two rigs out of female connectors and perf boards so that I can mount these boards upside down to a solderless breadboard. The good news is a few of us left comments and the manufacturer listened. This is their response. They now come with the pins separate so you can choose how you want to orient your pins. Hence. I'm soldering them like this. Now that we've soldered up the pins to our board, we need to flash it with the software. And unfortunately, this particular board doesn't come with a USB uh, port. So we have to connect our own USB port with this adapter. Essentially, this adapter will allow us to program it with our computer and platform I.O. So we'll start off with how do I map the pins? So using jumper pins, I'll need to attach some of these pins on this side of the board, uh, this adapter to the board itself. And essentially what that is, is that I need to attach the transmit side. You'll see this pin called TXD, which means transmit data. And that needs to be connected on to the RXD pin on the board, which is receive data. So if I'm transmitting and the board is receiving, then whenever I'm receiving, I need to connect my RXD pin up to my transmit board. So that way the board and the adapter are talking. Once that's done, I need to connect the ground to one of the ground pins. There's a couple ground pins you see here, but I like to attach it to this ground pin because uh, it's close to the 5 volt. This 5 volt pin will power our board. Lastly, uh, we need to put this in programming mode. Uh, by default, the board thinks that it needs to run the program, whatever is installed on it right now. However, this pin, the IO0 pin, if this is pulled to ground, that tells the board it's ready for programming. So I have a fifth wire here that connects the IO to ground. Now that we've identified which pins go to which, let's start off with downloading WLED. So if you were to Google WLED, first you'll see the knowledge page, which is their primary uh, page talking about the project. But the second page is the actual GitHub page. Here, uh, if you go and click on tags, if you go right to this button here and click on tags, you'll see all the different builds that are available. Highlight the, the build you want and then go to code and download zip. And this will download a uh, zipped up folder with the actual source code to your drive. Once you've done that, then we need to make sure that we've downloaded uh, VS Code. So here we've downloaded uh, VS Code. And we all, once we've done VS Code, you need to go to your extensions and look for platform IO. And you'll see this little alien over here. Now that I've taken my zip folder, I've downloaded my zip and I've got my code, I'm going to open the folder, find where I've unzipped that file. I need to trust the authors. And now I should see a whole bunch of uh, files open up. One of those one of those files that you see open up is this platformio.ini, and this is essentially the master configuration file. And I'll give you the default builds here. But the board we care about is the ESP32 ETH uh, environment build. I need to start off with this platform IO core CLI because we need to download all the different libraries uh, that this board requires. So this particular build requires other libraries in order to work. So by going over here, clicking on platform IO's core CLI, I need to type in PIO lib install. And what this will do is it'll go through and find all the different builds and pull down the right libraries and cache them locally. Now that I've got the libraries done, I'm ready to flash this thing. So making sure I have the pins in the right place, making sure that I don't want to put the wrong five volt pin in the wrong place, I can insert it into my computer. 
you'll see the red light go on and we are ready to go up here uh, you'll see we'll find our board in this case it's the ESP32 ETH board we want to go to the upload button we'll upload that all right you should start to see this building it's building it from scratch finding the libraries we've already downloaded and now it's compiling I'll we'll wait for this to finish okay sometimes it fails so we'll try that again Okay, now that's done compiling, we'll start to see it load. You can see the percentages. Now this is the more challenging way, and the reason why I like to do this is because I like to make sure that, you know, I, I had the source code of what I'm loading up. I don't want, I'm not comfortable with a pre-compiled binary because I never know what's on it, but you can take the easier route if you'd like and uh, download the binaries from the GitHub. They've already got the pre-compiled binary, so uh, you'll just need a, a flashing tool instead of uh, VS Code to do it. notice that the blue light has uh, stopped uh, the thing is marked as success so now we've loaded it okay I, at this point I am going to pull it out and I am going to take off this jumper here so it's no longer in programming mode I still have to power it up so that I can see the access point and configure it so that it'll hook to my Ethernet by default it'll be a wireless hookup and we'll be able to pick up the wireless access point and program it okay so now that I've, I've got this particular view, I'm going to plug in my board and it should start to transmit my access point. If I go to my network, okay, and there it is, CWDAP. Connecting, all right, I'm connected. And now if I go to 4.3.2.1, I should see my configuration screen. I can go to my Wi-Fi settings. Okay. So here is where I would set up my particular configuration. Um, if I wanted to hook it to my wireless network, uh, I could I could put my SSID here and my uh, my gateway if I if I care to have that. This is the um, address local. I'll need to rename this to something because this is the default WLED AP. Whenever the board is not hooked up to a wired network through the Ethernet jack or wireless, it'll be its own access point. You don't want it to be the default name and password, WLED1234, you want to change that to something that's different. So if you have to spin it up, nobody can jump on. And here is where we want to mark this as an ethernet type. So there's a couple ethernet boards and I think the W32 ETH01 is the cheapest kind. So once we've done that, I can now plug it in. It'll be another ethernet node on my network. Now I can, I can go to my router and set this to a static IP address so that my Falcon Pie player can see it and know how to address it for my show. This concludes this video. Thanks for watching.